Now, it's kind of strange that most everyone uses email, but very few of us truly understand how email works. This video will give you a basic and not so basic understanding of email that will be the foundation to solving a lot of the common email problems you may run into. To begin with, I want you to think of an email account as quite literally being a P.O. box at a post office. The reason I use this analogy is because just like a P.O. box, all email accounts are finite in the amount of email they can hold. And just like a P.O. box that requires a key for you to open it, all email accounts require a password. So if you had an email address of john at yahoo.com, then you have a P.O. box called john at yahoo's post office. If you had an email address of john at gmail.com, then you have a P.O. box called john at gmail's post office. All email accounts also have what's known as an incoming and outgoing mail server. An outgoing mail server is similar to a blue mailbox that we used to find on every street corner, with the exception that before you can use an outgoing mail server, you first need to authenticate yourself by providing your email address and a password. To better understand how Gmail or any other email account works, let's dive into it by explaining both POP and IMAP. Right now, we're logged into a Google account and we're staring at the inbox within Gmail. We'll start by clicking on the icon of this gear on the top right, then click on Settings. Next, I'll click on the tab titled Forwarding and POP slash IMAP. On this page, we have three sections, Forwarding, POP, and IMAP. Let's begin with POP. POP, or POP3, is a protocol. Simply put, POP is a method or a way to fetch emails from a PO box, an email account, and bring those emails to your computer. In the old days, we used to have programs such as Microsoft Outlook, Eudora, Apple Mail, and so on. While still around, these programs are technically known as email clients. These programs would reside on your computer, they take up a lot of disk space, memory, and they're very prone to attacks from viruses as well as malware. And it's for this reason that we strongly suggest that you never ever use an email client and instead use your web browser, whether that be Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or any other browser. Remember, Gmail was designed to be web-based email. So let's go ahead and use Microsoft Outlook for an example. In Outlook, you would create a profile. This profile would contain the necessary information for Outlook to access your PO box. That information would include your email address, your password, incoming and outgoing mail server addresses, as well as port settings. Once you've created your profile in Outlook and clicked on the Send and Receive button, what really takes place is that a hand would leave the back of Microsoft Outlook, your computer. It would then go to the post office, in this case, Gmail. It would look up your PO box called John instead of a key. It uses a password. The hand then opens the door, reaches in, grabs, and removes all the email from the PO box, leaving it empty. Since this is a Gmail account, the hand only grabs a copy of the emails it hasn't received yet. The hand then closes the door and retracts all the way back to your computer, holding all those new emails and puts them inside the inbox within Microsoft Outlook. So this method of fetching emails is known as POP or POP3. And by the way, in step two right here, under this section called POP, it says, when messages are accessed with POP, so let me go ahead and rephrase that. When the hand reaches into the PO box, only grab a copy of the emails you haven't received yet and keep a copy of all the originals inside the PO box. So here we are, years later. Now we have these things called uh, smartphones, mobile devices, tablets. Remember, your phone, for example, doesn't have a huge hard drive like your computer does. So a new protocol needed to be created that would allow you to interact with your email, one that didn't fetch the emails and their attachments since these devices like phones had no way to store them. That new protocol was IMAP. With IMAP, you're not fetching your emails. Instead, you're simply creating a bridge or a connection between your mobile device, say your phone, and the actual PO box. 
So a really good analogy I like to use when it comes to IMAP is to think of you shrinking yourself down to about two inches in height and you're literally placing yourself inside your PO box. So let's go back to our inbox for a moment. Assuming I'm looking at this email on my phone, if I delete this email from my phone, what I'm really doing is I'm actually deleting it from the PO box itself. So to summarize, POP is a method of fetching emails from a PO box and IMAP simply places you inside the PO box. It's crucial that you understand these differences since really it's at the core of how all of us access our email. So let's go ahead and go back to our forwarding and pop slash IMAP settings. You'll notice that pop is enabled and that's by default. So if you take my advice and you never use an email client like Microsoft Outlook or Apple Mail and you use your web browser to access your email instead, then think about it. There's no reason to leave pop enabled. Simply choose to disable pop, then scroll down and click to save changes. Leaving pop enabled, if you're not using it, it just acts as a security risk. If you're planning on accessing your email via mobile device such as your phone or tablet, then you'll obviously need to enable IMAP. Feel free to disable both of these protocols if the only way you intend to access your email is through your web browser. Also, one last thing I'd like to mention about Outlook and email clients in general. Again, remember in the old days, originally they were all designed to use POP. And nowadays, since IMAP is available, what we're starting to see is a lot of customers using Outlook, but using it via IMAP instead of POP, which if you think about it, defeats the entire purpose. They're using this big, clunky, dangerous program to put themselves inside the PO box when all you really have to do is just simply open up Google Chrome, which should be your default browser, going to Google's homepage, clicking on Gmail and logging in that way. So for those of you who are using Outlook or any other email client for that matter, again, strongly advise that you stop using those programs. So now that you're a lot smarter about emails, let me test you to make sure that I did my job correctly. Which one of these questions would you say is valid? If you answered A, then pat yourself on the back. Question B makes no sense simply because IMAP doesn't work that way. If you think I'm being a stickler about all of this stuff, it's because that's my intention. Ask or say the wrong thing to the wrong person and someone is liable to do something really, really dumb. Remember, terminology is everything in this business. And understanding what you just learned in this video will go a long way in helping you find a solution to a specific problem. I hope you enjoyed this video.